and I want him arrested. I put these gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> Family Guy number six is coming in hot. Today, we're going to be learning about and breaking down some of the crazy medical type situations and injuries of one of your faves, Family Guy. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Next is the Brown family. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I write descriptions of my patients to help me remember them. No, it's okay. Our last name is Brown. Dr. Hartman, what are you doing, buddy? Like saying things like that out loud. Like, okay, sometimes we have little triggers that help us remember things using patient identifiers relating to skin color or any other physical identifier should be used. If he's referring to the Brown family, then that would be accurate. Let's see where this goes, Dr. Hartman. Oh, okay, phew. Ah, then this must be Chubster Dum Dum. What? Chubster Dum Dum? Totally inappropriate. And don't say that out loud. That's not cool. The kid obviously is a little overweight. Don't call somebody out about that after they've had like injuries. You have a discussion about their weight if they need to have a discussion about their weight. I'm sorry, sir. No visitors. Excuse me. I'll have you know I'm the shooter. So, uh, how's he doing? How's he doing? How do you think he's what doing? Do you, do? you shot my son. So actually in the hospital, when somebody actually comes in to the trauma center who's a gunshot victim, they're actually not identified. The people taking care of them will know their name, but on the board or for visitors, the names are left off. So you can't actually identify who the person is because if this was like somebody trying to kill somebody, they potentially would try to get into the hospital and try to finish the job. Calm down. I want this racist out the room and I want him arrested. Racist? I put these gloves on. <laughs> I've had patients come in and they put their hand out to me and literally you can see feces in their fingernail. Like, this is not a joke. Like, it does happen. Wow, I really messed up. I yeah, you did, this Peter. bad since I drove by that speed sign. Oh, whoa. Seriously? We see in the emergency department car accidents all the time. We see people who have delayed extractions because of bent metal that the fire department's had to cut open with like say the jaws of life. And we see tons of injuries where like ranging from concussions to lacerations, to fractures, to amputations. We got Peter's car accident. That car accident definitely doesn't look survivable. It's flipping multiple times, the structure of the car, as well as it's on fire. By the time somebody gets down there, if you can't get out of the car, he's probably gonna die. Sorry, I just prefer to do number two at home. Where were we? I'm just going to say this because I'm going to say it. He talked about going to the bathroom. If you feel the urge, you need to go to the bathroom, please go to the bathroom. Don't try to suck it back up in there and wait for another time to go because you're going to be behind in the amount of poops you're going to have. You're going to increase your risk of diverticulosis, which then future increase your risk of diverticulitis and perforated bowel. It's Stewie, Dr. Hartman. He's having trouble focusing at school. Ah, uh, yes. So you're telling me your baby won't sit still in a way that's convenient <laughs> for his teacher? Yes. I'd heard stories, but never thought I'd see it with my own eyes. Babies crawl, babies move around, babies don't really listen. I don't know how old this kid is, but if he's acting like a normal child, he should be moving around. I'm going to write Stewie a prescription for ADHD medication. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Doesn't that stuff make you wired? Come on, doctor. Like, what the heck? You're trying to prescribe a stimulant to an overactive person who's highly stimulated. Obviously, it works for some people because that's why we have the medication. Our first go-to as healthcare providers and teachers and parents should be to address the problem and try to figure out from behavior modifications to get the kid to focus or figure out why the kid's not focusing before jumping to drugs as your first line of treatment. Well, if you're low energy and lethargic, yes. But if you're high energy, it actually calms you down and helps you focus. At least that's what I'm reading on WebMD. <laughs> a lot of different kinds of medicines. There's a cat in here. Okay, I guess we can give it a try. Here you go. Now, who's this little guy? Oh my God, the doctor's not even like paying attention. He's looking up things online. Obviously, sometimes you have to look up dosing, when to start a med. That's okay. Obviously, doing it in front of the patient, like fine if you're having a good open relationship with them. We're late. Whoa, <laughs> Peter. Uh, what the hell? Why does he look so Peter, it's sunken? Horrible. Other people live here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. How did this happen? It's from smoking. Not that bad. 
Peter, you can't live like this. If someone's been smoking for a long time, it's messing with the vocal cords, so you can actually hear it in their voice. And then their skin, it's like tight, leathery, wrinkled. You can tell. When you stop smoking, it'll take a very, very, very long time to get back to normal. Dr. Hartman, we're here for you to help Peter quit smoking. Mrs. Griffin, I can't do that. It's an addiction. Well, there are multiple ways to actually stop smoking. He's calling it an addiction. It's more typically like a habit. You could be addicted to the process of smoking, going outside, taking a break. You could be addicted to the nicotine. He's killing himself. Ugh. All right, how many Vicodins for you guys to just leave me alone? Oh my gosh. Wow, he's just like, well, let me just give you some Vicodins. We have an opiate crisis in the United States and around the world. Not something that you should replace it. But it's pretty crazy because opiates in itself affect a part of your brain that have to do with serotonin and dopamine leading to anxiety, depression, which is part of also the reward feedback system related to also smoking cigarettes. People might actually feel better, but it's a totally inappropriate way to treat somebody trying to get off of an addiction. Well, it's too bad Dr. Hartman couldn't help us. I guess we should go to the stop smoking clinic and then maybe get a couple bottles of wine. Oh my gosh. Some people have personalities that are addictive. There are multiple things that you could do to stop smoking. You can do Nicorette gum, you can do lozenges, you can do a medication. And then there's also the idea of nicotine cartridges if you do vape to slowly decrease the dose of how much nicotine you're getting. I forgot how hot my last patient was. Oh my gosh, totally inappropriate. Like this is so disturbing. I have my phone in my pocket to get phone calls from the hospital. I occasionally, with the consent of a patient written, take a photo of maybe an injury that I can send to a specialist so they know the injury and it's all no patient identifiers, it's via an encrypted program, and that's only if we have to do it. According to this projection, Stewie's adult height will be five foot one. What? <laughs> Five foot one. You go to the doctor's offices, you potentially can get a prediction of your height. Obviously, this is not something that is highly scientifically accurate because things can change. Growth plates can stay open longer. They can close sooner. Sometimes you can get an x-ray and it'll show your growth plates are still open when you're a little bit older and be like, oh, I'm actually still growing. I mean, I suppose it's fine if he's going to die at 14. Is, is there anything on there about that? Well, we learned in medical school that the short ones do go faster because they smell more farts than the rest of us. Oh my gosh. That actually is kind of funny, but totally not true. Actually, longevity studies have shown smaller people in general, not massive bodybuilders, but people who are just smaller in general will actually live longer. And it potentially has to do with if you're larger, you're asking your body to work harder and almost do double the work as somebody who's half your size. This is terrible. I can't be short. I'll be an outcast like Rudolph the Uncircumcised Reindeer. What? Rudolph the Uncircumcised Reindeer? I never heard of such things. All right, it's Dasher. He's been complaining, and he is the one who has to look at her. <laughs> I don't know. Mrs. Claus says it'll decrease my sensitivity. Oh my I'm gosh. Sorry, why are you talking to my wife about this? <laughs> Yes, by being circumcised, it does decrease sensitivity a little bit. Your higher chances of having an infection with an uncircumcised penis because you can get bacteria trapped underneath. If you don't clean it well, then you increase your risk of phimosis and paraphimosis. So there are multiple reasons why one would want to circumcise himself, not just because somebody has to look at it. Well, I got the results of your ultrasound and I got some news for you. Wait, wait, wait. We don't want to know if it's a boy or a girl. Oh, okay. Typically to find out the sex is done in the second trimester. Well, it's not breathing. Oh my gosh. He says the baby's not breathing. So the baby's inside of a human being attached by the umbilical cord, swallowing the amniotic fluid and breathing in the amniotic fluid. And what's super cool is actually there's holes in our heart for Raymond Ovalley. So blood kind of bypasses different parts of the heart because the lungs aren't being used to oxygenate tissue. It's amazing. I don't know about this Dr. Hartman. Every time I see him, he's totally inappropriate, saying weird things. His medicine is like weird, how he's treating patients. I did a whole video on looking at the different types of doctors that are in the cartoons and the reaction videos that I've done. Check that video out right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn those bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.